Welcome to this video tutorial on wound infections. Every nurse is sure to encounter caring for a patient with a wound, whether it be a surgical wound or a wound caused by some type of injury. Wounds are classified as either open, involving a break in the skin, or closed, involving internal damage to body tissue. There are five different types of open wounds, classified according to their cause. First, abrasion occurs when skin rubs or scrapes a rough or hard surface, as in road rash. Not usually a lot of bleeding, but it needs to be scrubbed and cleaned to avoid infection. Second, an incision is a cut made by a clean, sharp instrument, such as a knife or razor blade in surgery, or a glass splinter. A deep incision can damage tendons, ligaments, and muscles, and will bleed a lot and quickly. Third, a laceration is an irregular deep cut or tearing of the skin caused by blunt trauma, such as an accident with tools or machinery. The bleeding is rapid and extensive. Fourth, a puncture is a small hole caused by a long pointy object, such as a nail, needle, or bullet. It may not bleed much, but can be deep enough to damage internal organs. Fifth, an avulsion is a partial or complete tearing away of skin tissue. These usually occur during violent accidents and bleed heavily and rapidly. The main complication of an open wound is the risk for infection. Risks for infection are increased by the following conditions. Chronic illnesses such as diabetes, cancer, kidney or lung disease, obesity, smoking, a weakened immune system, certain medications such as steroids or chemotherapy, elderly patients, a wound caused by a dirty or contaminated object, foreign objects stuck in the wound, a wound caused by a human or animal bite, large deep wounds or one with jagged edges, emergency surgery, abdominal surgery, or surgery lasting more than two hours, and poor wound care hygiene. Signs and symptoms of infection include redness and swelling. This should diminish over time during the initial phases of wound healing. If it does not decrease and red streaks are seen in the skin around the wound or progressing away from the wound, an infection is likely present. Throbbing pain or tenderness in the wound area. Pain should gradually subside as the body heals. A sudden or increased pain may be a sign of infection. The area may be warm or hot to the touch. Purulent discharge or pus collected beneath the skin or draining from the wound. A small amount of clear or slightly yellow colored fluid can be expected from a surgical wound, but if the fluid is cloudy, green, or foul smelling, this indicates an infection. Dizziness or a fast heartbeat, generalized chills or malaise, a fever over 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit for more than four hours. These are signs of a localized systemic infection and leukocytosis, or an elevated white blood cell count. Complications from a wound infection may involve the following. Cellulitis is an infection of the skin caused by bacteria entering the body via a wound and spreading to deeper tissues beneath the skin. Tetanus, or lockjaw, is an infection with the bacterium Clostridium tetani, which produces toxins that interfere with muscle contractions, causing severe muscle spasms. Necrotizing subcutaneous infection, or necrotizing fasciitis, is a severe infection that causes necrosis of the innermost layer of skin and can lead to gangrene, the death of tissue caused by critically insufficient blood supply. Gas gangrene, a type of wet or infected gangrene caused by the bacteria Clostridium, produces gas within tissues. It spreads to healthy tissue quickly and can cause necrosis, sepsis, toxemia, and shock. The following are some ways to prevent wound infections. Teach the surgical patient to stop smoking four to six weeks before surgery. If they cannot quit, there is absolutely no smoking for 12 hours before surgery. The patient should shower before the operation using antiseptic soap recommended by the doctor and avoid shaving the skin area where the operation will occur. Following surgery, the patient should avoid touching the incision site and clean it according to their doctor's instructions. Educate on the importance of hand washing for the patient, visitors, and all caregivers. Encourage high energy nutrition and pain relief. Wound infections can be treated in the following ways. 
Wound cleaning with soap and water will wash away bacteria. Incision and drainage of the infected wound will release pus or pressure buildup under the skin. Some wounds require insertion of a drainage tube to drain body fluid that may accumulate and become a source of infection. Debridement involves the removal of necrotic tissue to promote wound healing. Otherwise, dead skin inhibits the development of healthy new tissue and makes the area more susceptible to infection. Wet or dry dressings may be used for debridement of a wound and to reduce opportunities for bacteria to enter wounds or spread to another wound. And antibiotics help fight wound infections caused by bacteria. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on wound infections. Be sure to check out our other videos in the description below.